So on page 136, we've got uh, figure 5.3 and 5.4 down at the bottom. And we're in the middle of a discussion on uh, capillarity. And what you need to understand about capillarity is um, that for, for you know, our, our bodies, think, think of your, ha your hand, for instance, <clears throat> your fingertips especially, um, our heart probably isn't strong enough to pump water, or sorry, to pump blood all the way to our fingertips. So, so one way that we get blood to our fingertips is by having really, really small diameter uh, um, blood vessels, that arteries and things like that, that go to our fingertips. And so if our hearts aren't strong enough to get the, the blood all the way to our fingertips, uh, capillarity, the smallness of the diameter uh, of those vessels in our fingertips, draws that blood all the way to the fingertips for exchange. So uh, when you see, when you're looking here, what you see is that the smaller, the, uh, the smaller diameter, here we're going to use the radius of the tube because we calculate uh, a height of rise using... Uh, using um, a radius. So the smaller that opening is, so the smaller the top of the opening of these tubes, so if we have a large opening compared to a small opening, the water is going to rise higher in the small opening, as you can see uh, on this side. Okay, so the smaller opening, the water actually gets, uh, gets pulled up higher than we have with a really uh, with a really large opening. And this corresponds to something like sand versus uh, a finer texture. So the smaller the, the pore spaces, the smaller the pores in our soil, the more water we can move around due to the force of capillarity, uh, just the capillary action of water uh, being attracted to surfaces and adhesion and cohesion. Uh, so what you can see in terms of, of this graph right here is that, <clears throat> excuse me, with, with something like a clay loam, so this one right here, we have water rising up in a clay loam. It takes it longer, right? So you see it, it takes uh, six days or so to get to the, seven days to get to the maximum height that water will rise in, let's say, a given column of soil that was clay loam. So it goes much farther, much, much higher in that soil because there's really, really small pore spaces and, and it can pull water against gravity. Uh, and so it pulls it way up into that soil, uh, soil column. On the left-hand side, you, or, uh, so, so the alternative to that is, is, of course, the sand. And sand, you do have some, some rise in the soil. So you have, if you had a column of sand and put it, it placed it in water, water would move up that column of sand, but it would move up, and it would move up at a faster rate, and it wouldn't move up very far, okay? but it would, it would move up. The same thing we can see in a field scale, right? So we put water, for instance, down this furrow, and you've got water that moves, uh, that moves laterally into the soil. It's also moving down. We can, this is a 3D um, occurrence here, so, so you can think about water moving down into the soil as well, but it'll move to the side. Sometimes it'll move uh, up in the soil, as is the case right here. So we've got uh, free water in this area but we have it moving up into the soil. Why is that? That's against gravity, right? Well, the reason is because we've got little little pores. So what we see right here, we've got pores in the soil that have the ability to pull water through forces of adhesion and cohesion up through the soil. And that is capillary movement in soil.